and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be taking a look at the uh, update for the Essentials add-on, which is quite extensive. Uh, this update was provided to me early, so I can get this out on the day of update by the add-on creator, but I already bought the add-on back way before I even knew him, so... Uh, technically not spawn, but early... I don't know. Early access to the update, at least. Um, just why I let you know, just in case some, you know, some people out there might think it impacts my opinion of this update. Uh, but I can assure you, if there's uh, something in this update that I do not like, I will criticize it, you know, and not let the fact that I got the update early uh, sway my opinion. So, let's uh, check out the first thing in the 1.4.0 change log. Added that the measuring tape can be used to measure the distance between two points quickly and conveniently. I have also helped beta test, well, not beta, but like bug test the uh, add-on. So, me uh, uh, so, there it is, measuring tape. It is four iron ingots, three string, and two eyes of ender. So, four iron Three string. Ah, it's right there. I'll just. Oh. One, two, three. And a couple eyes of ender. Uh, that means I need to get a couple of ender pills. And a single blaze rod. Craft them all up. There you go, and you have the measuring tape. So basically, say you want to say I wanted to measure uh, this whole room. So first, you punch where you want to start. Then you right click where you want to stop and it tells you the distance between those two points which here this is 40 blocks long. Now this is mainly a building tool if you can tell. So you can say, oh I need, uh, I need to know how big this, you know, how, uh, you know, how far it is between here and here. So I can tell the distance between those two points and map out how many blocks I need or whatever. Uh, it means you don't have to like uh, manually count each block out, uh, which actually would have been useful for me uh, in uh, well for me yesterday's live stream. I do not know when this uh, when this video is going to come out because, like I said in the uh, af the previously mentioned live stream. Uh, Add-on updates go out the day that they're approved and that there's so I. So I'm going to be flying by the seat of my pants and I have no idea when this video is coming out. Um, and I believe you can actually do this from a distance. So if I punch here, I right click there. Yep. That's 28.9 blocks. Uh, so yeah, it is pretty cool. What is the max distance? Nah, it's not going to do it straight up. So it actually has to hit a block for it to work. Yeah, pretty cool, and uh, de definitely useful in the uh, uh, building. Uh, it is a little bit annoying uh, to get uh, I, uh, ender pills, but I can't really think of a better item to put there, so not really going to complain about that. So let's put this gear away and move on to the next feature, which is... Added uh, world anchors keep scenario loaded when you are not there. Now this is going to be a bit difficult to show off. Um, it, it's world. So here we have the world anchor. It is four diamond blocks around a heart of the sea. This is supposed to be very late game because it ca uh, it can be very powerful. Uh, I'm just going to give myself one because I don't have a because I don't have a part uh, of the sea. Give out P world anchor. So I believe that this has a max of ten uh, world anchors. 
in it. So basically you put this down and in this cube, this cube will remain loaded. Now this does have some limitations like this will not work with iron farms because the iron farms require a player to be near it for the iron golem to spawn. Uh, but so what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to test this out real quick. So can I might click this? Oh, I did not want to put a second one down right on top of the first one. But yeah, that's going up to there. So we put another one here. So this area here. So then this area here would be loaded. If I just uh, go into game mode one and I fly. So you saw that none of those uh, sugar canes are grown at all. I think if I fly out of the ranger here and then uh, set the uh, uh, random tick speed really high, those sugar canes should still still be loaded I think if I'm not mistaken um, so they should still grow so I'm gonna go really far out so that there's no way it's gonna be loaded in fact the uh, strongholds underneath this village this isn't too surprising because in uh, bedrock edition stronghold search actively try to spawn underneath a village and if the village is closer to spawn, then it's had, it has a higher likelihood of having a stronghold underneath it. Yeah, we are really far out. You, even like my, uh, uh, the simulation distance is uh, four, uh, but even like my really high render distance, you can't even see my base anymore. So I'm gonna do game land. Random tick speed 100, the default is 1. So this is 100 times the default tick speed. And wait, so they should have at least grown a bit. So I'm going to change it back to 1 so that if this doesn't work, then uh, we'll see that it didn't work. Then I'm going to use a universal remote to teleport myself home. Okay, that's bugged out again. Yeah, sometimes this bugs out and uh, just forgets the uh, teleport locations I think uh, last time I heard it was like due to the like uh, the health bars add-on and I maybe I just haven't like reset it since I got patched maybe I don't know I'm just gonna have to fly all the way back then I guess Oh, I mean, there's a uh, ruined portal down there that I didn't even know about. So I'm just going to have to fly all the way back. Wasn't too far. And yet you can... Ah, so they didn't grow much. It's not really... Oh, there's a couple of cacti. What's going on? Never like the random tick speed. Yeah, the random... Uh, maybe you just didn't... grow much? Hmm. Should have set the random tick speed to higher, but I... Well, I did cut... But you did see there was a few grow. And that we did get, and I only had one cactus before, and then I got four cactus when I came back. So I think that did work. I just uh, didn't set the random tick speed high enough. Let me hold on, do that. And uh, TP at P wiggle, 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 one, one, two, one hundred, one thousand, one million blocks away. I'm going to set the random tick speed to really high. Oh, the uh, max is 
1496. Wait for a second. Say it back to one. And then TP negative. Yep, yeah, there we go. All fully grown and there's a bunch of cactus. So they, yeah, that proves it. They did work with crops with the uh, sugar cane and cacti. So this, so if you have like a automatic farm, you can just put this one of these next to your automatic farm and the it uh, will uh, make it so that the automatic farm does, you know, uh, you know, keep some growing. Uh, you could probably do this with, you know, with the uh, pumpkin and the melon and bamboo. Uh, but I believe he did tell me that there was a max of 10. So I've got two. I've got two down. Hold on. Game mode zero. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, ten max. Uh, so this is, uh, in my opinion, this is. You would uh, use this uh, for one or two things. Uh, thing number one, you want to reduce the amount of time people are going AFK on a well. So you can. Uh, you can like um, give uh, people permission to like place one of these, uh, one or two of these down at a farm for them to overnight, uh, so that they don't have to go instead of, instead of going AFK. Which, if you're running around, could be useful because uh, then uh, you're not running into the problem of uh, people not be if it's a the uh, particular if it's a busy well, then you're not then you're not. Then you're not gonna have a, have a problem with people going AFK overnight to, for their farms, but of course you'd have to like test this with each farm, uh, each farm to make sure they uh, they work with the different types of farms. And I honestly don't know the list of every farm this does and does not work with. Like, I don't think it'll work with Ray. Well, it'll probably work with like uh, ominous bottle farms because uh, uh, if the chunks loaded, then the uh, pillager captions or should spawn in I believe but might might need a, a player within the area to do that uh, and obviously like you can't do that with the raid fans because you need somebody to drink the ominous potion um, but with like automatic like wheat you know wheat farms and other crop farm farms like um, or Pack with other farms like cactus, uh, not wheat. Well, you you can have yeah, like wheat to farm and then like the they will grow. Uh, but it's more like uh, uh, sugar cane, cactus, and like all the stuff like that that you can uh, just leave to grow and then automatically harvest with like a piston or whatever. So, yeah, it is quite useful. Very very expensive though. Um, I mean, to catch this when you were bait it, uh, when we were like uh, bug testing it, but uh, maybe I haven't. I get the idea that it is supposed to be a very like late game thing. Um, but maybe like making it cost a bit less might be a good idea. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm just going to put this in the chest. No. I can't really come up with like a bear crafting recipe for it. Off the top of my head. Um. Yeah. Wait. Uh, let's uh, move on to the next thing. Which is... Added the portable anvil. Uh, I believe this will just be the same as the other port. Yeah, just four anvils. So that's a lot of iron, so that's, so that's three, six, nine, twelve, so I need twelve blocks. Oh, wait now. Ah! You 
Yeah, damn it. Uh, 12 blocks and it's 4 ingots per, so that's 1 for 4, 2 for 8, 3 for 12, 4 for 16. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Hello? Oh wait, I'm, I, I was right clicking, not left clicking. Uh, I'm a bit tired, so 1 for 4, 2 for 8, 3 for 12, 4 for 16. Yep. Ah, what? How? That bug's back apparently, so I want 16. I don't want that 48. I'm going to put that 48 back in. Why is it not... There we go. Oh, wait. Ah! I'm missing anything else. So I need 12... There we go, that should be enough to make four anvils. Yeah. There we go, four anvils, one portable anvil. Just like the other blocks, you right click and it summons one of them and you can use it. Which I could understand why some people might want to disable this because it is basically infinite free anvils. Uh, even the creator was a little bit dubious. Oh, you can't summon it. Floating. Um. Well, in my opinion, it's not super because it's not like I'm super difficult to get if you have an iron farm. Like, I have literally thousands of iron, blocks of iron, so it's just like, mm, it's fairly balanced in my opinion. Uh, but the add-on creator might add like a cooldown or something uh, to make it a bit more, a bit less powerful, maybe. You can see. Uh, rework death points to no longer clash with keep inventory. Yeah, so, uh, before keeping, if you had keep inventory on, it would like kind uh, the death ray points would kind of break it because um, before the death ray points used to keep inventory. So basically, how it would work is, is it would turn keep inventory on, uh, then put this, then put your inventory into the death ray point, and then turn keep inventory off again. But the problem with that is that um, it would just if you had keep inventory on, then it would turn keep inventory off, and then you'd lose your stuff or something. I can't remember exactly what was uh, happening with it because I never use, I don't really use keep inventory, especially if, with this on, so. Um, yeah, so if I do game or keep inventory true, make sure death rate points are on. Here we uh, I'm getting distracted. Turn death ray points on. Kill at P. So yeah, everything uh, we made in my inventory and there, no death ray points was made. Uh, this could, uh, could, like I said, this could cause some bugs. And now if I turn keep inventory to faults. And uh, kill myself again. And this also means now you do lose EXP upon death with the death ray points. Which is something that didn't happen before. That day is noisy. And now I gotta get my inventory sorted out again. There we go. Uh, next up is 
If I should go all the way up. Uh, wait. Some of them's disappeared because I've done some. Uh, new update. There we go. Scroll up. Measuring tape. Well, thanks. Added the super sponge. Collects more water than a regular sponge and can be used repeatedly. So, it's quite uh, cheap as super sponge, actually. Super. It's just a single sponge with uh, two fire charges and two blaze powder. So, give that sponge. I'll just give myself a regular sponge. Alright, so we need two fire charges, which are fairly, uh, which are quite simple to craft. It's just blaze powder, coal, and gunpowder. So, I need. Uh, Two blaze rods to craft into four powder, which is here. I need two coal and two gunpowder. Then we can craft. Oh, you get three pair. Neat. Well, you only got one pair. Which does make this a uh, bit cheaper. I'm just going to dump these in there. And that. So, if I... Just run over here, because there's an ocean over here, so I can show this off. I know it's from Vinny and... Last view, I think it was. The well, last one for me, up, oh, And that's left over from another review. Yeah, I do just have a habit just chucking things everywhere. Right, so you to use this, you uh, go into some water. Oh. Uh, let's uh, go over here. Oh, I did. The flying on the arm can be a bit annoying sometimes. And you don't want to fly. So you just go to where you want to use this, and you right click. And it clears out a quite big area. So if I just take the armor off so we can actually see the water. And wait for the effects to clear. Oh yeah, I also have a text that makes water clear. But I right click. And it does clear out a quite big area. Now you're not just going to be able to like go into the ocean just like start spam clicking and clear out a large body of water. Uh, you are still going to have to do this at least somewhat uh, methodic methodically. Um, but it is still quite good. They, yeah, you do sometimes get like uh, single blocks of water. Don't know. I don't quite know why that happens. We just need to use the sponge again. Get rid of it. And then when the sponge has zero durability, what you can do is uh, give FP to... Oh. Uh, now I'm just going to go into game mode. Game mode. You just grab yourself a fern, a furnace. You can use a portable one from the same add-on and something to cook it with. So let's grab some coal. You put the sponge in here with, some, with the coal, it'll cook up for a few seconds. And it's uh, fully repaired. Ah. Oh, I found a bug.
Uh, I'll have to report this, but... Yeah, I did not know you could do that. Obviously. And obviously, like, gaining inf infinite fairnesses from this is not... ...ideal. Yeah, that's oh, I did not know you could. Well, first bug is that you can put an item in there and then create another fairness. So essentially, you have infinite fairnesses. I'm just waiting for this to run out to see if it breaks. Yeah, well. Nope, that's going to be there forever. I can break, oh. Yeah, you can break that, yep. Yeah. Okay! Did breaking the first one fix the last bug? Oh! Nah! Go away. No, but still, okay! Yeah, I'm gonna report that to the Add on creator real quick before I forget, and then I'll be right back at my base with the next new feature. See, be happy. Right, so I'm back. Back to my base, so, so let's uh, move on to the next item. I just opened the book by instinct because that's why you it's almost uh, add on the stew. Uh, World Anchor, Super Sponge, Portable Anvil. Oh, did I skip Portable? Super Sponge, good. Anyway, oh no, wait, no. Anyway, I must have missed that. Anyway, uh, anyway, added a portable slash, a uh, public slash private death waypoint where only you can access it. It's uh, contents if it's uh, private. So. Uh, I'm gonna go to my bedroom for this, so I don't have to do much. So, if you go into the book, into settings, you can uh, see here, death, uh, there's death ray points and there's private death ray points. So, uh, I think right now it's off. What's that? Uh, uh, I can't really show this off too much because, I, you know, this is a single player world. But I believe green is public. I'm not mistaken, uh, it doesn't really matter what order I take these in because it's just going to get all messed up again. And then... Turn that off and I believe red is private, I think I could be mistaken. Oh no, it's blue, not red. Um, well, I, yeah, even though I got the uh, colour of the... Of the death ray point to wrong, uh, so I could definitely be mi uh, mistaken or misremembering, but I think this is private and green is public. I think I, uh, in the book, it set it's the in the settings, it's uh, when private that shows private off, so it might be the other way around, but I could have sworn it was the first way around. I don't know, but but. Well, I'm just going to assume that the book's right and that's uh, public and green, blue is public, green is private, I guess. Alright, this one was the other way around. Never mind. Ready for the noise interruption? But yeah, that is uh, really good uh, for, um, for if you want a uh, realm. And you don't want uh, people killing each other to steal uh, the stuff. You can turn the private uh, uh, death ray points on, and then uh, uh, it disincentivizes people go around killing other people because there's not really much point in PvP if you can't if you don't get anything from it.
Uh, portable anvil, death ray point, public and death ray point mess. May death ray points no longer get targeted by the. Yeah. So th this was a funny thing. The warden would always uh, would go after the death ray points. He could he could never break them, thankfully. Uh, but it, uh, it was a bit of a funny bug. Uh, made death ray points reveal left leftover items when the visible items have been taken from it. So uh, basically. If you have a full, because it, it can only, uh, um, it, ca it can only show you a single chest at a time, but your inventory is, uh, you know, has one extra row, plus the armor slots, plus offhand slot. Um, more than that, uh, basically if you have a full inventory, uh, once you take all the pre previous items out, it'll uh, show you the last of the items that you have left in there. Yeah. Uh, fixing the issue with uh, death waypoints will not float up in liquids. Yeah, I did uh, encounter that in, I believe it was the last update video. I killed, I jumped into lava and it, I don't think it floated up to the top. I can't remember, it was so long ago. Adjusted durability loss for tools when using tree, sand and stone breakers to be more reasonable. Yeah, so this, um, I can't really show this off, but... Uh, in the last update, he, uh, he made it uh, so that um, tree captator and uh, um, all that used durability on your tools, um, which I thought was a good balance change, considering that um, the tree captator is free. Uh, you don't have to craft it, uh, so I think it was a good. I said it was a good trade-off, but it was, uh, it was very, um, it would basically destroy your tools after a few uh, uses. So, making it so that it doesn't absolutely annihilate your axes, pickaxes and shovels uh, is really good, in my opinion, um, and a good balance change. Uh, yeah, and then just the durability. Automatic tool replacement now works so when using the tool to attack an entity. So this will uh, now replace your swords. Uh, added stone breaker is basically just three by three mining. You can enable and disable this in here. Yeah, stone breaker right here. For stone, deep slate, neverack, diorite, granite, andesterite, tough, endstone, basalt, blackstone, crimson nylium, and warped nylium. So, I want to see, does this work with the Omnitool? Um, I'm just going to jump down here. Oh yeah, it does. So it leaves the ore, which is nice. Uh, this has fortune on it, but if I give FP diamond underscore pickaxe enchant at P uh, silk touch. If I do that, will it give me Oh. Yep. Yeah, there we go. It does give you stone. It just didn't work with the, uh, with the, uh, dripstone. Maybe dripstone should be added to this. Yeah, it works with, uh, enchantments, so this is a good way of getting a lot of that. Oh, well, like stone and stuff if you need it, or like um, tough and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that rhyme. Tough and stuff. Next up. Uh, portable anvil, waypoints, automatic tool replacement, it's free by free mining. Tree Baker Breaker should now support uh, trees found in uh, realism craft in uh, the dynam in dynamic worlds. This is a, I, I will commend them for this because 
I have said multiple times, and I believe the first time I said this was in the Essentials add-on, because I believe that was the first add-on, at least the first one I encountered, to have cross add-on compatibility. It's always cool to have cross add-on compatibility, and, and you know, compatibility with uh, Dynamic Worlds is, is also cool, even if I don't really like the Realism Craft Dynamic World, it's still cool for people who do like that uh, Dynamic World. Uh, leaf Breaker to automatically break leaves when using the Tree Breaker, so... Uh, this can uh, be enabled and disabled in the settings right here, just below Tree Replanting and the above uh, Breakable Spawners. Leaf, you can, uh, you can uh, add the Leaf Breaker. Now, there are reasons why you might want to disable this, because it can cause a bit of lag. If I just, like, uh, go into game mode 1, and just get a jung jungle tree. Put four of them down. And get some bone... bone meal. Oh, well, it didn't take long for that to grow. Then I just chop it down. I also accidentally dug the dirt. You can see that it does break the leaves. But yeah, if you have a uh, bunch of the... Uh, if you have, like, a bunch of, like, trees uh, planted together, like, if you just, like, have a whole row of, like, oak trees or something, it can cause a bit of lag. Uh, on lower end devices, so I would. So if you're on a lower end device, I would very much recommend that, uh, uh, disabling that uh, if it's causing you problems. Yep, there we go. I actually. Uh, uh, kind of broke that with like planting a bunch of like uh, like a big square of oak saplings and then turning up the tick speed, making them all grow, and then turning the tick speed back down. And then like uh, when I chopped down the tree, like chained them all together, and it uh, almost <laughs> it broke the world a bit. Uh, so yeah, it, uh, do be careful with that to not uh, chain too many trees together. Uh, tree, a uh, leaf breaker. Tree breaker now works on crimson and warped fungi. Which is really cool. And I also, uh, I don't, I think he might have. Oh, hold on. So there is, uh, something I want to show off with this. So if I go back into key mode one. Prim. Uh, so I need the nylium. And the fungi. Wow. I need a warped nylium. And the fungi. And some bone meal. Uh, that there, that there. That there, that there, make sure they don't grow into each other because that can actually cause some problems if there's, if they grow into each other. But not, nothing too bad, just like some blocks won't be broken. So I'm going to show this up. Oh, what's queuing on? The game is not happy with me right now. Oh, I must. Ah, I must have. Why? Which one of these? There we go. I think I turned it off. It looks like I did. Yep. I fat fingered the RTX button. Again, move zero. So if I chop down this, yeah, so it also takes the wart blocks and the, the, the uh, and the shroom lights with it. 
which is uh, very nice because then you don't have to bring a hoe with you to collect up all these blocks. Good change in my opinion. Do like, uh, well, good addition in my opinion. I really do like it if you're going to be uh, farming a bunch of these. And also, you can get like a, uh, a, a like uh, add-ons that can that allow you to unpack ward blocks into never wards, which uh, makes gathering never wards a lot easier if you if you get lucky and spawn in a wart uh, in a crimson biome. That chest is getting pulling and start dumping in this chest. And that's what uh, I believe the war breaking the ward blocks is under the leaf breaker, I think. Could be wrong on that. Uh now works on things and what thing I large jungle and dark oak trees should now replant more reliably. Mining helmet can be enchanted, so yeah, uh if you didn't know the mining mine. Mining helmet, it's 5 iron, glowstone block, and 2 yellow dye. I'm just going to give myself one. Give at P mine. Ing. Mining helmet. We need to go into game mode 1 to show this off. Oh, there's already an anvil down here. I believe that's the enchanted books. Yes, it is. Element in there, enchanted book there, so it can be enchanted with Aqua Affinity, Forms, Respiration, Protection, Unbreaking, and Mending. Uh, this is actually a suggestion that I made. And then, uh, uh, I was like, like, yeah, that's a good idea. Always nice to have them be, have the armor be enchantable. So yeah, that got added. Uh, mining helmet can be enchanted. Increase mining helmet's durability from 100 to 200 and protection level from 1 to 1.5. Mining helmet now works reliably uh, when used next to other players also wearing a mining helmet because there was like, apparently there was like a bit of like uh, problems with like the light blocks and all that but that's been sorted out. Increase mining helmet's light output distance from 15 to 30 blocks. Double iron doors no longer open when pushed. Ah. Double eye in the uh, double doors opening now features an opening sound. Uh, so if I just give at the door, acacia door. Okay, sure. I really don't care. Why can I not put a space? Yo, oh, what's going on? Oh, there we go. Phew. What is going on? Give at P bitch door two. How difficult what? What's going on with Minecraft then? So punch. There we go. Yeah. Uh, that was actually one of the complaints I did make uh, uh, in the update video when that released was that it didn't uh, make any noise when opening and closing, which was a bit off-putting. Uh, setting and uh, not settings. What am I doing? Uh, when the uh, breakable spawn spawners feature is enabled, it now also allows breaking uh, budding amethyst uh, when you're using diamond or neverite silk touch picks. If I give at P bud, if I give myself a budding amethyst, I'll place that down. And yeah, you can break it. Uh, oh, inventory lag. I can fix that just by giving myself a second one. Um, now this is really helpful because then you can uh, take this and uh, 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 hold on, let me grab a couple of these. 
So you take one of these, so you'd have it... Uh, let's go upstairs. So you'd have it in your base. So you'd have, like, one here. And then you'd have another one two blocks away in any direction. And then you can have your own little amethyst farm at home. And uh, this is uh, really uh, cool. I, I do like that. Uh, um, my only complaint about that is that it is lumped in with breakable spawners. And I think it would be cool if it was its own uh, toggle. Because there are, I, I'm willing to bet there's people out there who want one but not the other. Like there's some people who think you should be able to get spawners but not budding amethyst or budding amethyst but not spawners. So I think it would be cool for those people if uh, it was its own toggle because then they because uh, then you know they could just choose whichever they want to keep and not keep. Uh, uh, double iron doors, double door when breaking spawners. Uh, increased universal remotes teleport account from 10 to 15. That is nice. Uh, checkpoint item has uh, been rewritten. It now works similarly to the teleporter in the universal remote, but it has a limit of two teleports. Uh, yeah. Uh, give a P check. So, how do you craft a checkpoint again? I think it was cheaper than the remote. Check. Checkpoint. Four ender pearls, four diamonds, and a recovery compass. I think that could be done with like near enough on recovery to just a regular compass, because I believe recovery com recall, uh, the recovery compass requires yeah compass requires eight echo shards. Like that that's a lot of echo shards for two, for this item in my opinion. Like just putting that down to a normal compass would be fine in my opinion because uh it's only uh, two uh checkpoints and you've got like four ender pills and four diamonds in there and uh, so it's already expensive enough without the eight echo shards on top of that. And also, if I go to the remote, why would I use the uh, eight echo shares to make a recovery compass for this when I could save that up, kill the wither, get a couple more shards, and make the universal remote, which has far more check, which has far more like teleport points, and is uh, and it isn't that extremely much ex isn't extremely more expensive. Like I'd ra it's, I'd rather fight the wither than. Uh, have to go down, have, then have to find another Asian city and get another eight uh, Echo Shards to make another recovery compass than that. So yeah. Yeah, the recipe in my opinion is still way too expensive. But it's nice that you can have a couple of checkpoints. So you can have like a checkpoint for your storage system and a checkpoint to, for your Bedroom and teleport between the two. Like, it is a cool item, it just needs that uh, recovery compass to be a regular compass, in my opinion. Because you have these um, lit elevator blocks, which are in the same add on early. Which are four ender pearls around the scaffolding, so this have been like four diamonds and the deck. a regular compass I don't think is too OP. Uh, there's a zombie. Anyway. On to the next uh, update feature. This, this is a big update by the way. Um, I don't know. So, uh, automatic crop replanting now supports never warts. That is cool. Um, it significantly expanded admin remote function fun functionality. Now this is a cool 
Cool one. So you can't craft this. You can only gain creative mode or just like give at the admin the admin remote. Uh, you need, and you also need to be in game mood or want to even use it. So even if someone gets it, that shouldn't have it. If they're non creative mode, they can't use it. But in this, if you're, you can just like disable everything. So if you don't. Say you don't want people to use, so say you don't like the, let's see, breakable spawners. You can disable that in the admin remote, and then if I come into here, it'll just be gone. The, oh wait, breakable spawners is still in there. I course, did I? I've got to hit submit, God damn it. Yeah, that is something I do, right. If I hit submit this time, like a smart person and not, and don't press escape like an idiot, you will now see, uh, that breakable spawner shouldn't. Okay, apparently it's still in there, but does it still work? Uh, set, block, spawn. Alright, yeah, yeah, yeah. Spawn. Mob spawner. Silk touch pickaxe. Okay, yeah, so it... Oh, wait, it would help if I'm not in creative mood. Yeah, so it did turn it off. I thought it also removed it from the book. Maybe that, maybe it was supposed to, but it can't be. Uh, so you probably want to make it uh, readily apparent to all everyone playing on the realm uh, what you have enabled and disabled. So hey, I've disabled breakable spawners that I won't work even if you turn it on. So uh, if you break a spawner and lose it, that's your own fault. That like, and there's tool replacements, and say you don't want lava reflow, you can turn that off. Uh, or double door opening, or automatically updating maps, or weather setting, and you can even like disable the settings in the remote, so you can't, so they can't change the weather. Or time, uh, you can disable capture cubes, all scanners, portable blocks, uh, player teleporters, teleporters, capture cubes working on the wither, warden or ender dragons, so say you want capture cubes, but you don't want it working on the, on the boss mobs. There you have it. Uh, you can turn the leaf breaker off in case you're on a realm and you don't want people using leaf breaker and then possibly like breaking the realm or something and stone break if you think that's too OP. Which I can see that. I think like um, I am, I myself, I, I'm a little bit iffy on the balance on that because it is like it does do a bunch of. Um, hold on. So if I just get a wooden pickaxe real quick. Give at P wood E N P wooden pickaxe. So he has fifty nine durability. And it goes It would help if I was not in creative mode. Uh <sighs> And it goes down to 50, so yeah, that does do a bunch of durability damage, but this has like 2,000, uh, 2,015, I use it once and it goes down to 2,014, so yeah, it's still kind of balanced because this, it uses the same amount of durability on your tool, so it's not like you're mining it all, all for one durability, so it is kind of balanced, and it also means that there's, you, there's still a reason to Craft the multi block pickaxe because it has more durability. I think it has more durability than the diamond pickaxe. And it also only uses one durability for a 3x3 three three area, and it is three diamond pickaxes, so it's more expensive. So, uh, with like cross compatibility, add, uh, add cross add on compatibility, that's still quite good. Um, yeah. But yeah, if you don't like, you can disable it if you're the admin. 
Uh, look. Uh, we work elevators to hopefully work reliably on realms. Hold on, did it fix this issue? I was having. Nope! Still. Oh, wait, there we go. It sometimes works. I think it's because it's like. Uh, making my head go into the ceiling, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, moving on to the next, uh, on to the next thing. Uh, elevate player teleporter should no longer clash with other add-ons as well as work more reliably. May teleporters not clash with damage indicators and similar add-ons. Infinite lava source features should now work with three by one lava sources. So let me uh, test that out real quick. So give at p lava bucket two. So three. It said three by one. Uh, sure, I'm gonna yes. Do I have some? Student? Yes, I do. Yeah, I did not want to fall off. Alright, so one, two, three. One, two, three. Do I not have any other blocks? Uh, I'll just use the portable fairness. Boom. Oh, there we go. Only the portable, portable fairness doesn't work if you're holding shift. Is lava we found what turned off? Oh no. No. Okay. Uh lava reflow is on and it uh not exactly working out. Great. Yeah, that feature still needs a bit of work. Well, maybe it's just this world that I'll... If it's... Uh, I'll test it out in a uh, separate world after recording this. And that, uh, uh, if it is just this world, then uh, you won't see that. But if it isn't, I'll uh, uh, tag that on at the end. But hey, it wasn't... Uh, the add-on was my world being a bit buggy. Uh, chain chunk borders visuals uh, visuals to be more uh, comfortable for uh, users uh, to use for the color blind. I actually do quite like this uh, chain uh, without it uh, uh, also being for the color blind because it looks uh, more unique and nicer. So basically, if it's a slime chunk, it'll have that green square in the center, and if it's not a slime chunk, then it won't. Which is, uh, and, it, and I do think it just looks better. Uh, turn that off now. Alright, so I'm going to change chunk borders. All scanners now scan for ores in any direction up to 30 blocks. However, the radius was changed from 3x3 three three to 1x1. One and that it can now also be repaired. So if I give at p or scan on scan um, oh did the uh, crafting recipes get changed? Or yeah, so the all, the uh, first level for coal, copper, redstone, you'll change it to just require copper, I have ender, two note blocks. The gold one requires gold, I have ender, two note blocks. The diamond one requires an echo shard, diamonds, and a note block. And the, the Asian debris one requires four Asian debris, two gas tiers, two magma cream, and the diamond scanner. Now, this is a good change, so. I was I did complain about the overusage of echo shards in this crafting recipe, 
the add-on creator uh, Wo Judo, I believe is his uh, username I, I use. He uh, he listened to my criticisms and it, uh, um, has uh, changed it. And I do believe this is a lot better. I believe that a single Echo Shard for the Diamond Ore Scanner is fine. Uh, and the Ancient Debris one requiring Ancient Debris is fine. And yeah, it's fine. I'm, it's also using the uh, Diamond Ore Scanner. Yeah, that's the I, the crafting recipes are fine. And I do like how they have changed it. So before, uh, like the Chainsaw Log said, it was just a 3x3, three three, but it was a much shorter range. And you basically weren't missing out on much just if you were just to, you know, dig in that area because. It only went out like seven blocks, so it wasn't like it was only revealing like four blocks every like one that you dug, four more blocks for every one block that you dug, and this and it wasn't, in my opinion, it wasn't really worth it, even though it didn't have um, any durability. But yeah. So why is this not? Why can't I give it to myself? Or underscore. Yeah, weird. Just gonna have to go into game mode one. So I'll just grab this. So yeah, basically now it scans much further, but it only does it in a single Block, which is useful if you do dive mining like this. So you, so say you're that there's some. It would be good if I turn that off. Uh, stone breaker. Just turn the deep slate off. One off. Because that's what I need turning off. And just like fix the bottom of here up. Say you're doing the dive mining, which is the most efficient way of mining. You just go a few blocks and then you just say, okay, is there any ore that way? Nope. Any ore that way? Nope. Just mine a bit more. Then you mine a bit more. Just like, oh, is there any diamonds in this direction? Nope. Is there any diamonds in this direction? Nope. I got, but I'm getting very unlucky with the diamonds. But yeah. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, change. And it goes much further. Uh, and let me just like, uh, hold on. So if I just like set the block diamond. Oh yeah, uh, beer, 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 diamond or deep slate diamond or. And uh, there we go. It even tells you how far away it is. So yeah, that's a really uh, good change. And it, it does now have durability, but you can repair it. So if I just like spam this a whole bunch. Oh yeah, redstone's on a different one. That might change in the next update, might not. Oh yeah, there's a down door block there. Another diamond door block. It has a lot of durability though. How much durability... Like, I'm still on like 1,926 durability for this. So yeah, it has a lot of durability. Uh, the uh, early ones might have less durability. I'm not super sure. So, uh, you can repair this, but I can't remember exactly how, does it? It didn't really tell you in here. I don't think which is a problem. Uh, however, the all scanner can now be repaired. All scanners have been adjusted to allow for more uses before breaking. Yeah, so it doesn't tell you how it uh, is repaired, which is a problem. My opinion, but I can just I if I go to this one, I think yeah. Uh, 
Uh, so if I go to the this one, I think is yeah. So if I go to the showcase, there's one in here that showcase did being repaired, if I remember correctly. Uh, that's a sponge one. Yeah. Ah. So you need. It's in an anvil. There's either ancient debris, copper, gold, or diamond. So basically, whichever one it took us used to craft with, in an anvil to repair it. So you put that in there. You put a diamond in there, and it's repaired. Okay, didn't let me repair it for some reason. Maybe because it's too high durability, it's like, nah, too much. I don't know what happened there. Again, I'll test it out in a, another world uh, and to see if it's just my world being a bit buggy. But anyway, moving on to the next one for now. Uh, recipes to turn large quantities of concrete into concrete, concrete powder into concrete more quickly. So if I give at p concrete pow give at p what there. So, with uh, water buckets around concrete, you can, around concrete powder, you can make uh, black concrete. Yeah, you know what, you get what I'm saying. A concrete around the water bucket gives you concrete, and you get the bucket back. It does take a little bit of time, but it is uh, easier than setting up a whole, like, conversion thing. So that is cool. Uh, I think, I don't think I suggested that feature, but I did suggest that no one that's coming up. I might have suggested it. I don't know. I'm not going to claim that I did it, because if I don't know. Uh, what's going on? What's going on with the recipe? Added oxidant can be used to oxidize larger quantities of copper quickly. So, oxide. Oxidant is one water bucket, one bone meal, and one gunpowder. Let's make a couple of these. And they stack, thankfully. And then if I just get a copper block. Oh wait, no, I need eight copper blocks. And then if I need, I need 16. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you put eight copper. If you put eight, oh wait, yeah, I have the thing there. So you put eight copper blocks around it to get exposed copper. And then you put eight, eight exposed to get uh, weathered copper. And then you can put, uh, and then if I had another one, I could get uh, oxidized copper. So basically, putting eight around one of those buckets ages it up, ages it up one stage, and you get the bucket back. So, uh, next up is I did recipes to wax large quantities of copper quickly. So if I give at the B wax. Hold on, 
one. I'm just gonna go into game mode one. B. What? Where's wax? Where's? Is it not called bees wax? Is it just called wax? Oh wait, no, it's not wax. Oh god, my brain just my like it's honeycomb. Idiot. How did I forget that? Anyway. So yeah, you can craft the wax versions with uh, one wax, one weather copper, copper and one honeycomb. Uh, this originally was going to be uh, one honeycomb and the eight around it like the other, like the um, oxidization one. Uh, the Occident bucket, but um, me and the guy that was a bug testing was like, no, yeah, no, just one to one is uh, fine because it's already saving you time and that's already enough to uh, um, make it worthwhile. And uh, uh, because usually you'd have to place it down, wax it, then pick it up, which so this saves you a bunch of time at not having to place down a bunch of copper blocks and waxing them. Um, but yeah, um, he, he wasn't quite sure, but we were like, yeah, no, it'll be fine. Uh, and I, yeah, I, I stand by that. I still think it's just, it is fine just one to one. Saves you just some time. Now I'm into, you know, like I said, break, place and break a bunch of copper blocks. That, especially if you just want a regular, uh, oxidized work. Waxed oxidized, uh, sorry, waxed regular copper because then you don't have to place them all down. Uh, wax them and then pick them all back up with, with the other oxidized levels. Unless you unless you're crafting them with the oxidization, then you don't. Then if they're, they're already placed down, so you just have to wax them. But with the well, since we have now have the oxidant bucket, uh, that's not as much as a problem. So yeah, I think uh, with that it's quite balanced. In my opinion, but if enough people make a fuss about it, then he might change it so it is uh, eight waxed copper blocks for one honeycomb. But honeycomb is not really super difficult to get. Just you just have to wait for a bit, and you can get a bunch of it. Deep slate can now be used in the stone cutter. Now this is a feature I specifically requested. Uh, I was like, hey. Uh, Regular deep play that requires silk touch, you can't craft that into anything. Uh, so could you make it so that uh, you, like, if it's through, like, the uh, stone cutter or whatever, being able to, like, you know, convert it. If I give at P deep, deep slate 64. You can now put in a stone cutter and it will give you all the recipes so that, uh, Cobbled deep slate wood. Which, if you prefer to use silk touch, which some people do prefer to use silk touch for mining, uh, this is really nice for you because then, um, you know, you don't have to place it all back down and mine it with a fortune or a regular pick uh, just to get cobbled deep slate. And my inventory is starting to fill up. Uh, and now be using stone cutter. Cha change saddle recipe to require leads. So yeah, you can craft saddles. So this is like kind of like it, just like the string holding it all together, like you know you just sew it together. I think he said there's like kind of the idea or something. I can't, but yeah, he just felt like it should be more than just leather. I was like, well, maybe just like replace that leather with an uh, ironing. But he's like, nah, this is fine. I was like, okay, I don't care much about this. Like, it's nice to have if you need saddles, but if you have like a raid farm, then you're gonna have way too many saddles. As it is, so uh, yeah. 
Uh, crafting capture cubes now gives you three per craft instead of one. So if I go here, cap. You can craft. Yeah, capture cubes gives you three. I think this is fairly balanced. I mean, I in my opinion, it would have made that a little bit more sense if it was four, because then it would be like one for like each obsidian, and it'd be more like you're turning the obsidian into capture cubes uh, with an iron ingot and the and then uh, with and a quarter of an eye of ender. Or an eye of ender shadow, whatever you want to call it. But three is fair. It's fine. This isn't too expensive, and the uh, capture cubes are quite useful. Uh, I remember I was helping um, a guy make a uh, with a skeleton farm, and he needed a uh, pigman for it. Uh, uh, and we were saying how much easier it would be if he could just use a capture cube or a safari net on it, uh, and just take it there. Portable, portable blocks no, can no longer be broken for endless free resources. Uh, and the Discord link there if you want to join. Uh, I'm also on there and I do uh, talk on there sometimes. But if I just uh, go to Game Mode 1, get the port, portable crafting table and end chest. A player teleports at you. Game mood zero. So place down the anvil. And break the anvil. Place down the crafting table. And break the crafting table. We can break the blocks behind the crafting table. Uh, let me just pick block that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Get back here. There we go. Uh, fairness. Can't break the fairness. End the chest. Can't break the end of chest. Yeah, and apparently it's only the fairness that is broken with that. So yeah, so yeah, that's everything. This uh, update is a really cool update. It, um, I'm gonna go do a little bit of bug testing and uh, uh, now, um, and uh, you might see the results of that. You might not if there's nothing to be said, and you're not. But uh, yeah. Uh, in case I don't see you in a minute, so I'll uh, see you guys in the next video. I hope you guys all did enjoy it. Uh, join my Discord, the link down in the description below. There is a Discord members realm, it's free to join. Uh, and it has uh, got a bunch of add-ons and most most of the add-ons, a lot of the add-ons that I have reviewed. And so yeah, hope you guys all did enjoy this video. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one and bye-bye.